Live. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this portfolio preparation webinar. My name is Stephen Kinsella. I'm the co-director of Immersive Software Engineering. I'm very excited to be with you this evening. This is a very uh, specialized and extremely structured webinar. We only have one topic, um, so we're going to we're going to dive straight into what the portfolio is uh, in just a moment. But just to remind everybody, the BSc uh, MSc in Immersive Software Engineering LM173 on your CAO is a learn by doing course. You are going to learn working on projects. You're not going to be in lecture halls. We have an entire immersive suite um, for you to learn in. There's there are there are no end of term exams. And um, while there obviously are quizzes during the um, during the process, uh, it, we, we're our focus is on continuous assessment. You get a master's degree in four years, um, 1,382 days to be precise, and you spend half of your time being paid uh, to solve real world problems in some of the world's best uh, um, uh, firms. It's an incredible uh, course because when you're not in um, some of these world beating firms like AWS and Stripe and others, uh, you're also going to be learning um, with us, with some of uh, our incredible lecturers and researchers. And our students have already had amazing experiences they presented to Enterprise Ireland and uh, they were able to show uh, John Collison, the co-founder of Stripe, uh, the um, uh, projects that they had been working on um, from day one. And you can see some of the space um, that we have created for the students there. Um, but that's enough from me. Um, what I'd like to do now is to pass you on to uh, my co-director, uh, Professor Tiziana Margaria, our professor of software systems, who's going to give you a little bit more detail about the course and uh, uh, who precisely we're looking for. So Tiziana, if you're ready, please take it away. Fantastic. So thank you, Stephen. Uh, that's an excellent introduction to the course. It's actually what is happening right now on the floor of ISC in our new building. Um, this is the question, so to say, for you, what kind of people are we looking for? What are the, the traits of the ideal candidates for the ISC course? Well, important is that you are a curious person. You have an open mind uh, for technology, but also an innovative mindset. You may like entrepreneurship, you know, doing things yourself. Uh, being good at organization and communication is also important because it is part of the uh, learning experience to organize yourself and organize in teams uh, and also communication because you're going to have to present and communicate in orally and in writing quite a lot. You will probably enjoy uh, working in teams. Um, that's a significant part of the course. Uh, we try to give you only real relevant problems to solve. So there is nothing that is basically constru construed for the waste basket. The point is that we want to have real stakeholders as much as possible so that you can learn for something uh, from something that is relevant. And if you have these kind of qualities, if you recognize yourself, then you have you have the best preconditions for being successful in uh, uh, in ISC. Uh, there is still going to be a learning curve, but we are going to teach you the rest. Um, if you are interested in, in ISC, OK, the important thing is what are the entry requirements. So this is basically the specification for the CAO. You need to have a living certificate or uh, an approved equivalent um, uh, high school examination uh, with a minimum of two H5, four O6 or four H7 grades. If you don't have an Irish living certificate, there are equivalent uh, um, 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 processes that are basically um, run uh, by, uh, by the CEO, by the University of Limerick, if you are a non-EU student. So this is, uh, this is the specification for that. Um, the important part uh, is that we require to have a minimum grade H4 in mathematics. So if you have only O grades, uh, because you chose it or because your uh, school is offering uh, the O path, but not the H, you still have a different opportunity because uh, um, UL offers a special mathematics examination for the for all the courses actually of the Faculty of Science and Engineering to which ISC belongs so that uh, following the Living Cert, you will have an opportunity to actually take an exam and show that you actually have the H4 uh, knowledge level in mathematics. So this is important because there is a part of foundations and a part of, part of theory where some kind of familiarity and uh, uh, propensity, so to say, for mathematical thinking is very important. Uh, the other most important thing that we require additionally to the um, uh, Living Certificate are the requirements of the portfolio. So every applicant must submit a portfolio. Uh, after the portfolio submission, you may be called for a 
interview. Typically, it is not a very long interview. It is just, you know, uh, in order to find out, uh, you know, to which extent uh, um, uh, the idea is really from you or uh, whether there is something that is uh, not so clear from uh, from your submission. We want to be true to everybody and give everybody the fair chance. And so an interview may be possible. Uh, the important part to know is that the portfolio is very important. Um, it is worth 300 points on top, so additionally, of the up to 625 from the living certificate. So the grading in a certain sense or the score is from a total of 925 maximum possible points. We are going to go in the rest of the seminar uh, of the webinar uh, uh, in depth to the portfolio uh, just as a reference for this year. And we all know that, uh, you know, it may have been a bit of a special year, but the, the fact on the ground is that the uh, threshold for um, being admitted in, um, in ISC was 803 points uh, for the first cohort, 25 students. And with this, it was my information, my summary. I um, hand back again to Stephen. Thank you very much, Tiziana. I think that was an excellent summary of, of where we're at. I'd like to pass you on now to my colleague, the brilliant JJ Collins, who will take you through some of the portfolio uh, um, preparation uh, notes. So with that, please, JJ, take it away. And thank you very much, Stephen, for that point of flattery and as well, Tiziana, as well, for outlining the purpose behind the portfolio. So again, just to re-emphasize, this is the opportunity for you students to signal to us that you possess the qualities to grow, to develop, to succeed, to flourish in immersive software engineering. And hence the value of 300 points, which uh, provides sufficient bandwidth for that. So what we are looking for, and I stress evidence-based, and repeated evidence-based examples of, and the second key point, independent work to illustrate your answer in response to two questions that we pose. And question one is focused on uh, creativity and innovation, and that's worth 200 points. What we're looking for is uh, you to demonstrate how you have used technology in the broadest sense of the term as a vehicle to develop a solution, um, typically a lightweight proof of concept prototype. Uh, the example can be from any domain, should be meaningful to you, could be from your school, it could be from your home or from your community, where you see an opportunity to add a little value, make people's lives a little easier, provide insight into some dynamic in that environment. And you should describe the path from concept to design to construction and include an evaluation of the work. And then question two is achievement or achievements that one is proud of, and that's worth 100 points. Uh, next, please. So again, to revisit uh, those questions. So on the right there, question one, it tells us about the most creative, interesting or enjoyable way in which you've used technology. The word limit is a thousand words. That's an increase of last year. And the rationale behind that is to provide a little more opportunity for you to do a deeper dive into your work. And their text using technology doesn't have to mean writing a computer program. It could be any situation in which you've used any technology to do something interesting. You'd be surprised how many problems you can do a deep dive into with, for example, spreadsheets such as Excel. And then question two, an achievement that I'm proud of, word limit there is 500 uh, words, and tell us about an achievement that you're particularly proud of. Choose, please choose something different from question one. If we jump back to the text on the left, so question one to repeat a thousand words. Second bullet point there, again, to stress this, you cannot reuse content created for another leaving search submission or any graded course or at any level. So we're very familiar with the fact that for subjects such as engineering or computer science, you have assessments that are due, significant assessments due in January, February, March of 23. The portfolio submission must be independent of that. Secondly, evidence. If you were in our position and you were grading a submission, what would you look for with respect to evidence? So a link to another folder, it could be a Google Drive or it could be a, a online one folder type thing containing screenshots, design artifacts, data that you've captured to analyze the problem, visualizations of Git commits, etc. And the second thing, where you have written some code, then we'd need a link to the Git repository for that particular solution. Also, just to stress that the code in where it was submitted for this uh, product or for the portfolio, that should be commented to demonstrate that 
that you understand the code that it gives us confidence that you were the author. So question two then, 500 words, provides, we're looking again for you to provide supporting evidence of achievements, for example, certs that were awarded to you, newspaper articles about the particular um, endeavor that you succeeded in, blogs, etc. And then with respect to question one and question two, more details are available on the IAC website, www.software-engineering.ie, etc. We also have a grading rubric on that particular site and it gives you much greater handle on how we go about evaluating the submission. One point I'd like to draw your attention to here is that our specification, it's not as tightly scaffolded as one finds with the leaving cert and the purpose of that is to provide you with the opportunity to interpret the spec and therefore be able to demonstrate the creativity, the, um, the insight, the intellect, the drive, the motivation that we're looking for in our students. So uh, next please, Mark. So the biggest um, hurdle that people face with the portfolio is just getting started. Where do I start? I feel like I'm suffering there for a point, a phenomenon called a paralysis by analysis. I spend so long thinking about it that I never actually make a start. So one takeaway message from me is the KISS principle, which is keep it simple and straightforward. So it's small steps. And the first step would be, well, identifying a problem. I might do a bit of research on that. Look at other um, competitions, etc that are focused or targeting second level, BT Young Scientist, um, Universal Design, the big idea, text, et cetera. Text being an example of a program that is affiliated with immersive software engineering. We just have a look at the submissions that have been there. Are there any that resonate with me? Are there any that capture my imagination that ring a bell? Also, again, to look, uh, in, look around me at home, in my community, at school. Opportunities there to develop a lightweight uh, proof of concept, prototype, etc. And I might say that I'm going to give myself two weeks to do a bit of background research into potential um, areas that of interest. And then at the end of two weeks, then I've identified the potential submission pathway and I've written one or two paragraphs on it. So it's short iterations or cycles, clear milestones, clear deliverables. And a problem or opportunity that is meaningful to you, depth, not breadth, for question one. If you're thinking about developing you no know, lightweight proof of concept app using an app builder, instead of having lots of features, it might have just one or two features, but it does exactly what it says on the tenant, it does it very well. Avoid paralysis by analysis. The portfolio, the submission deadline is mid-April, Ian, one of our speakers later, will talk more about deadlines and submission process, which is 4.5 months to submission. There are loads of time if start working now, you work consistently and you work clever. And examples in question two do not have to leverage ICT as well, just to draw that to your attention. So uh, next. So question one, let's just revisit that and have a, think, a little think about uh, pathways for that. So tell us about the most creative, interesting or enjoyable way in which you've used technology. That's 200 points. So in the next slide, we're going to look at some sample submissions and potential submissions. So next. So on the left there, we have design a website. So for example, at school, maybe you're getting lots of course notes or you're getting pointers to lots of uh, uh, websites with ancillary notes. And you might do your friends a favor, decide, well, I'm going to keep track of all of this on a website. So day one, you're thinking about, I'm going to hard code the links at HTML and CSS, but then you're thinking that maybe in three months time, I go to a few hundred links, how do I manage this? Well, maybe I need to have a database, which at this point in time, I may know nothing about, but I need to have a database that I can query, that I can uh, uh, store links in and delete links that are no longer in existence. How do I go about doing that? How do I go about uh, presenting or having a very nice user interface that has a very nice set of aesthetics that captures the attention of my audience. I might need a little bit of JavaScript for that. So at this point in time, problem definition, working towards it. And then on my project plan, I know that just very basics, maybe a database might be required, etc. But that's a long way down the road. Keep your focus in the next cycle. 
in the middle of a smartphone app, for example, I know that in my household, there's everybody's running around, turning off lights, switching off plugs, and turning down our thermostatic valve and radiators. We'd really like to see where the energy is being used. So I'll create a lightweight app that people can just record what they're using. Um, and over time, then I can track this and maybe use a, a spreadsheet to do some uh, analytics on it. Or an electronic project, third and right, maybe, for example, using Raspberry Pi. Um, for example, there um, to use a controller for a game, it has augmented control, etc. And again, I might go to the Raspberry Pi site. They have lots of tutorials and very interesting projects, projects ranging from example, being able to generate jokes. I might tailor that to take cognizance of, for example, if I'm living in Ireland, Irish humour, and maybe even to do one in the Irish language itself. So these are sample ideas. Again, uh, next, where we have more examples. So video production. But it's not the case of just taking out my phone for 10 minutes and shooting some TikTok like videos. So it's the process of uh, scripting the actual uh, storyline, then going shooting post production, what software did I use, etc., and then publishing that content and it, evaluating it. How many people have watched it? What's, what are their comments? What's the general feedback? In the middle there, we have data analytics across a whole range of domains. Again, a lot of work can be done with Microsoft Excel or other spreadsheets. And then on the right, music production. And again, similar to video production, you know, music production is about how, what's the design process? How do you go about composing a score? Then how you go about actually um, possibly determining if you can get some access to studio time and being able to record it, post-production processes and evaluation. And then maybe as well to look at for video production, music production, is there an opportunity there to use artificial intelligence, for example, in video production, generate avatars that can be embedded into the video stream, etc. So these are just a, a, few, a, a few ideas to get you to think about the initial steps. So next. And with that, I'm going to hand you back to Stephen. Thanks very much, JJ. And I think uh, for th those are some brilliant examples that you, you, you've given there. And I, I, I really think that uh, there's a lot of food for thought. Uh, now, can I ask my colleague, uh, Dr. Ian O'Keefe, to take over and uh, give uh, you guys a bit of a sense of the um, second portfolio question and um, some submission uh, uh, detail that I think we all need to know. Um, so, Ian, uh, take it away. Thank you for that intro, Stephen, and thanks JJ for those excellent comments on question one as well. Um, now we move on to our portfolio question number two. Um, tell us about an achievement that you're particularly proud of. And for this question, we advise that you choose something different from question one, if at all possible, to help broaden the scope of your submission. Um, could you have the next slide, please? Yeah, so this section of the portfolio is your opportunity to express your creativity and independence, uh, to share examples of your, your drive and determination, uh, your ability to demonstrate teamwork, working with others and times you took the lead, and how you've learned from your past experiences. Um, the reason for our interest in these areas is that, you know, being a software engineer involves much more than just technical skills. And there are also many interpersonal and professional aspects that are are required really to work with teammates, to gather requirements from customers and so on. So that's our reason for focusing on this as well in question two. It gives you more scope, we feel, in your submissions. Uh, could I have the next slide, please? Thank you. Um, here are some of the things that would be really good to share as well in your question two. Um, any unique aspects of your submission, um, examples of where the task was complex and you had to resolve things, um, any obstacles that you overcame along the way? Because we feel you learn a lot from, you know, when things go very easily, it, it's, it's, I think you learn a little less than when you, when you encounter obstacles and you have to overcome them and you can express to us how you did that and what the process was and what you learned from it. Um, and which is also important that you look to choose something that requires independent work uh, and motivation as well. Um, by this you mean, for example, that you didn't simply complete, say, a school project directly as directed by your teacher, but maybe you thought of some an extra layer to go on that, or you came up with something completely separate and independently that interested you. Or maybe you're working on something you just completely thought up on your own at home or at friends. So the next slide, please. And now, yeah, we move on to 
as, as JJ mentioned, we move on to the submission timeline itself. I know a lot of people are wondering about this. Um, as you can see, there are there are three um, submission kind of uh, windows, if you like, in the CAO. There's the, the normal closing date. Um, there is late applications on the 4th of March, the 1st of May. And then at the end, then there's also the change of mind. Um, now, what, the first thing we're going to point out, um, especially after experience uh, from questions we got from last year, is that um, once you apply for any of these three submission windows, you will receive an email from, from our admissions in UL. And once you receive that, then you, you are required to submit your portfolio for that window. Um, you can't then decide, oh, maybe I, I won't submit now. I'll wait till a later window because once you've been sent that link, you have to use it. So just, just to, to everyone be forewarned of that. Um, also, we got feedback that, that where we had some overlap last year with uh, the submission windows for some of the other Leave Insert projects, like for example, engineering. Uh, they were in the start of end of March, I believe, start of April. So what we've done this year is we've extended uh, the submission window on the normal CEO closing date to the second week in April to give you more time to prepare. If I go on to the next slide, please. And so now to move on to the process in a little more detail. Um, once you submit um, by following the link, oh no, sorry, <laughs> once you once you've submitted to CAO that you want to do IC, which of course you all will because it's brilliant, um, you will receive an email from UL Admissions and they will send you a link. And it, when you click on that link then, it then brings you right into our, we have a portal set up where you'll be able to submit there. And that's in, in yellow, this is what I mentioned on the previous slide. Each applicant will only receive this link once. Uh, admissions will not uh, resend that link to you. If say, if you reapply, do a change of mind later on, they will not then re, re issue that link that, that each student applicant will only get the link sent to them once. Just to keep that, that's very important to keep that in mind. Um, international students similarly who apply to UL will likewise receive an email with a link. And we do advise as well that you check things like your spam filters to make sure you don't miss this email. Um, admissions will also, uh, you supply um, a mobile phone number as well. They also submit, send you an SMS to warn you that an email has been sent. So keep an eye out for that as well because it won't be reissued in later submission rounds, as I mentioned earlier. Um, could I have the next slide, please? Yeah, so in the process itself then, once you get the link in the email, there'll be instructions in the email anyway, but uh, you, you would um, open the link and then you upload your portfolio submission to our, our portal. Um, it'd be in the form of a PDF document. And once you've submitted your details, you'll receive a confirmation email then sent to the email address you supplied in the submission form. So make sure you put the, you spell your email address correctly there as well. And like your exams, once you go into this portal, you only get to submit your portfolio once. So you can't then come back, say two or three days later and say, oh, I want to update or change it. Once it's submitted, it's submitted. And once the application window closes, then we will begin assessing portfolios in the IC and admissions in UL then will then contact you with the results. I think that's me finished there. Yeah. Thank you, Stephen. Hand back to you now. Thank you very much, Ian. Um, I think that was really clear, very, very, very uh, comprehensive, comprehensive uh, um, discussion of how one actually gets the portfolio in. And now we'll move to your question. So we've already got 10 um, that are um, uh, uh, published. Oh, we're up to 12 already. So th these will come lashing in. So for the next, say, 25 minutes or so, we will uh, just work on answering questions. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I will um, I'll just start reading these out and um, just throwing them out to, to to individuals. So let's do the first one for JJ. Um, if my son does not get into ISE, what similar courses would you recommend? He's designed some basic games and scratch projects. Are these in any way suitable for the portfolio? Um, and then again, it's difficult for six years to get to give time to computer projects in the middle of le the leaving cert. There must be an advantage to kids whose schools offer computer science as a subject. JJ, what do you think? Well, thank you very much for the easy question, Stephen, as usual. Um, so there's four, quest four questions there. Uh, first of all, Scratch developing a game. 
yeah, by all means, I think it would be a very suitable medium, especially for creativity. So what's the purpose of the of the game? What's the underlying strategy, etc.? And Scratch is a visual development environment, a lot of concepts and programming languages such as Java, Python, C, etc. You could also do them via Scratch. So by all means, that's um, a very a useful medium for submission and portfolio. The second thing, uh, yeah, six years is an incredibly busy time for a student, but if they make a few hours for this every week and if they work clever, bring a lot of focus to it and just think before they start, etc., then in four and a half months, they'll have a very you know, impressive body of work to do or uh, there to demonstrate. Third question, if I remember, Stephen, is on alternatives to ISE. So obviously, ISE should be number one, but inside an UL, we have other courses that are uh, a lot of pedigree behind them, a lot of success. One of them is LM121 Computer Science. We've also got a new course, um, LM174, I think, which is BSc in Artificial Intelligence. And the final part of the question was about equity and fairness with respect to, you know, leaving certain computer science. So we're, we're you know, cognizant that um, at this point in time, not all schools have computer science. I don't have the numbers precisely. Maybe other people, or other faculty, Nicole, do. But it's not but the case that all student, current students in immersive software engineering who were admitted in September 22 had leaving cert computer science. I don't have exact figures. Uh, back to Stephen. OK, th thanks very much, JJ. I think that's a very clear answer. Um, uh, a couple of easy ones I can answer. Uh, Anonymous asks, will this be recorded? Yes. Uh, Anonymous also asks, when does the portfolio have to be submitted? By and where and how? I think we've 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 answered all that in the slides, Anonymous. Um, so you can take a look at it. Um, here's uh, here's here's an, an, a nice easy one uh, for uh, for Tiziana. So Ushan asks, hi, I'm really into quantum computing, and I'm thinking of doing something related to that for my portfolio. I'm researching quantum algorithms and their real world applications. I was thinking of animating how some of the algorithms work, solving a problem, and the merits of quantum computing over classical computing. Then I either make a website or go into my school and presented to my peers to raise awareness of quantum computing. I've never animated or made a website in my life and I learned how to do them while doing this. Is that a suitable project? Tiziana, what do you think? I think in principle, yes, because if it is something that is new to you and that you're doing on your own in uh, out of your own initiative, and it contains, of course, something that is about quick physics, that's the quantum part, and the computing part as well, and you have to actually acquire IT skills, uh, ICT skills in order to present it. Why not? Very good. Thank you very much, Tiziana. Um, uh, uh, one for Ian Anonymous asks, will you find out how many points you earn from the portfolio before the leaving certificate exam? Um, that's another one of those. Um, Yes or no questions. Um, if you submit in in the first submission window, then yes, you will get actually you will get your results back by early May um, through admissions here in UL. But if you go for late applications, I'm looking over here or change of mind, then they actually complete. They will be completing and getting results back to you after you've done your leaving cert. So, but they so you would get them in early July or at the end of July. So, 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 so somewhat something of a, a quantum answer there. Yes, uh, Schrodinger's marks. <laughs> Indeed, uh, uh, very you can good. Both get uh, the results and not get the results at the same yeah. time. Yes, <laughs> exactly. So, if you want, if you want to know your mark, uh, apply early uh, and yeah. often. Anonymous asks, will there be any scholarships available for the course? Yes, there will. We have uh, um, very generous uh, scholarships from both uh, Transact Campus, one of our uh, industry advisory board partners, and from Intercom for both access and equality, diversity and inclusion, which are two important values that the course has. So absolutely anonymous, we're going to have uh, that. Here's another question for JJ. Anonymous asks, when you say that the portfolio does not have to involve coding, what other ways of using technology Technology would be suitable to use in the portfolio, as this is the main issue I've come across when thinking about question one. JJ, what's your response? Well, thank you again for that question. So I'm just reflecting there, if you think about music production, for example, there's various uh, bandwidth filters, low pass filters, signal processing filters, etc. And that gets very technical for, uh, for an applicant to be able to get a handle on that and be able to apply them in a meaningful manner to creating a composition. That demonstrates you know, the creativity problem solving. That is the core of what we're looking at, but also being able to use technology as a vehicle for expressing that. So that's one, one example of many we could give in response to that. 
Excellent. Thanks, JJ. Uh, another question uh, uh, here for, for Tiziana. Hi there. I'm currently developing an app. I was wondering if I could ask you two questions about it. I'm guessing the next two questions are the two questions. So one, is a Python library suitable as a project? And two, could you add more than one thing into question one or is it strictly one thing? OK, so I'm known for the person with the one thing approach. So to the second, it is very simple. Uh, choose the one that is closest to your heart or where you think that actually there is most impact find some criteria but choose one and concentrate on one it is not the quantity it is the quality that matters like in everything in ISE uh, is a python library suitable as a project well it depends if it is uh, for solving a problem if it if there's some uh, degree of relevance complexity or whatever yes if it is basically you know just minor changes over a gazillion of libraries that already exist contribution to libraries well that delta is actually what what is going to matter thanks tiziana excellent uh, answer uh, one for ian here uh, what is your advice for creating an app that is accessible to people who are disabled? And what languages would you advise someone to learn that are best suited to developing the user interface of an app? Thank you. OK, I have two questions there. Um, on, the, on the first one, um, if, if this is uh, for your submission to the portfolio, what, what actually could be really good is if you could actually do your own research on on the area of, of, of disability and, and use of software and then incorporate that into your portfolio. I think you, you would actually learn an awful lot in that as well because there, there are many aspects too. It could be a visual um, aspect of being disabled. Like is it that you, does, people can't see colors or is it that they have bad vision or what you, you need to explore really what, what uh, levels you're, you're focusing on there. But I think you could really expand that nicely. Um, in terms of languages, user interface has been a uh, <laughs> that's it. That's it. Yeah, that's an interesting that's one. That's HTML, CSS. Yeah, uh, you know there, any of the frameworks, Bootstrap, etc. That that are around. Yeah, or I don't know, Angular, React. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, whatever whatever works best for you is the best one to pick. I would say the one you are most familiar with. Or yeah. I think that that's a that's a very good answer. Uh, I mean, you, and, and just to be clear, you're not dodging the question. The the answer is there. Whatever works best for you uh, is, is the answer. Anonymous. So another question: How many places are available in this course? And, and the answer is around fifty uh, for next year. So double the play, double the number of places that are available this year. Um, uh, and uh, we've gotten some questions: Are are here and dare students? Uh, uh, are there places? And the answer is absolutely yes. And international students too, more than welcome. And uh, so on and so forth. Here's a question for Tiziana. John McArdle asks, what does the typical working day of an ISE student look like? OK, so uh, the typical working day is basically a full working day, so nine to five, more or less. The ISE building is open before nine o'clock and it closes after five o'clock. So there are students actually still hanging around and working on projects um, in that time, so to say. Um, it depends on the weeks, uh, it depends on the phase. For example, right now we are concentrating more on projects because the students have acquired the skills in order to do interesting projects and so they are working actually on this. In the first weeks, of course, it is more foundational. So you have to actually learn, you know, the columns, the pillars in order to create then your, your projects on top. And so it is a little bit more, okay, concentrated on the theoretical part and on exercises, hands-on exercises, um, rather than, you know, groups, uh, projects in groups, however, I think that in week two, the students already presented to the residency partners their second project in groups. So we start really with relevance from the day one. Very good. Thank you, Tiziana. I'm going to put this back to you as well. Um, Anonymous asks, how advanced is the computer science uh, or how, how advanced computer science do applicants need to have? It's a bit of a complicated question, but uh, do how much computer science do they need to know coming into the course? So if you already are somehow familiar with some concepts or connected with programming, that's of course helpful. Uh, in principle, if you are a good problem solver, if it is a problem in completely different domain like mechanical engineering, like uh, uh, you know physics or something like that, that's good as well. What you need is a little bit of understanding of abstraction. And that's why we are actually asking people to bring an H4 in mathematics, because that's the minimum level of being able to think in terms of models that we actually need. Very good. Thank you, Tiziana. Um, 
a question from Oshin uh, here, and this one will uh, is for you, JJ. Am I out of depth if I have no idea how to code yet? Also, if you could give a rough estimate of how many of your current students had no background in coding before doing the portfolio last year. Uh, thank you for that question, Oshin. So with respect to coding, so no, number one, just to re-emphasize again, that the purpose of the portfolio is for you to demonstrate your creativity, uh, innovation, etc. If we look at the residency partners on the ISC's uh, website, the thing that strikes me, impresses me about all of them is their creativity, the kind of wackiness, to use that phrase, that they bring to creating solutions. To the example I love to quote is um, Manoir uh, drone delivery a few years ago. Drone delivery you need to be nuts to consider that to use the vernacular. Until last Christmas, I was uh, prone on the sofa at 10 o'clock at night looking at some rubbish on TV when I was instructed to go down to the shop and what I would have given them for drone delivery. So it's the idea, it's the creativity. Once you have the idea, then you have to figure out, well, how do we go about delivering this? And immersive software engineering, it requires students over the period that they're with us, the three and a half years that they graduate with a master's to get comfortable and very competent in using technology to realize the vision. I'm um, going back to, I don't know any coding yet. So could I be a facetious suggestion that maybe instead of watching a box set in over 24 hours during Christmas, there are lots of really good, uh, highly reputable and renowned uh, websites that are associated with third level institutions to provide really good short core introductory courses on programming, for example, into uh, a little bit of uh, Python or et cetera. But some of the languages for developing user interfaces in the front end, and that might be the starting point, but only if it's necessary for building out the solution. Can I have one last point, Stephen? Um, where, where do I start and what languages? I think there's between four and 10,000 languages, depending who you're talking to. So you can't ask us, um, if you ask, you know, my favorite language is going to be different from me and different from Stephen, different from Tiziana. So what I would suggest that you might consider is reaching out to software engineers that you know, maybe within the extended family or the immediate family. But if you don't know anybody there, then just write to a company within your locality. I guarantee you they'll be happy to have a conversation with you and help you get started. So, Thanks very Thank much, JJ. Um, uh, and and in terms of uh, in terms of uh, the the last point uh, on you know uh, uh, what what proportion of the of the students uh, who are currently in ISE uh, could code um, before they they came in the door? Do we do we know that proportion? Yeah, um, there is quite a proportion of students that uh, code for the first time. And the point is that we start with problem solving, which is not coding. Coding is one slice of the big um, realm of uh, software engineering. And so we get to the code, we teach you to code, but the problem solving is actually the most important characteristic. Great, thanks Tatiana. Uh, Cameron, just uh, 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 he says, um, uh, and this is one for Ian now. Just to clarify, I am allowed to submit direct links to my code. Is the link numbers, are the link numbers dip limited and do the contents of within the link count to the word count? Ian? Hello, Cameron. Um, no, the, it's, <laughs> if, if you do a link say to a GitHub uh, repository, no, we will not be counting every every word in all your code and subtracting that from the 1000. So not to worry about that. Um, in terms of the number of links you want to put into your document, um, maybe just um, be reasonable with the number, but uh, we don't have an actual restriction on the number of links, no. Very good. Uh, um, does ISE, Anonymous asks, secure employment for its graduates? I mean, in terms of us getting the, the, the in terms of the residency placements, we we are the ones who, uh, 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 we guarantee you the the, the various placements. Um, um, that's part of a, the design of the course um, and it wouldn't exist without them. Anonymous Gosh. asks, Sorry, and I was asked, do you need higher level maths or can you get in with ordinary? You need higher level maths as an absolute prerequisite and a H4 in that. And um, if you don't get that, there's a special exam in um, in uh, uh, that 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 is is uh, offered by the Faculty of Science and Engineering. 
Um, Anonymous says, I don't have much, if any, coding experience. Um, well, uh, Anonymous, as uh, JJ has wisely said, have a lash, um, download something over Christmas and uh, rock on. Teach yourself a bit of Python. Try to get yourself, um, uh, try try to design a project uh, that, uh, try to design something that you'd, you need to solve using using some technology. Um, I think that, that's very important. Olin asks, um, uh, and this is an interesting question, one for you for Tiziana. Now, all the questions are interesting, but this, 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 this one is one we haven't heard before. For students that will have to work during college, would this course be suitable, Tiziana? So if you think of, uh, you know, jobbing a little bit at the weekend, you know, some part of the weekend, maybe yes. If you actually have to maintain yourself completely out of that and you're counting on, you know, 10, 20 or more, so to say, hours per week, Definitely no, because it is an immersive uh, uh, and accelerated course and you are going to have plenty of work to do on the ASC. Very good. Thanks, Tatiana. Um, uh, one for you, uh, Ian. Anonymous asks, if I did a project about how I use SolidWorks, would that be OK since it's a type of software and it's a large part of technology? Um, so when you say technology anonymous, could you, you do you mean do you mean the, 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 the subject technology? Um, you might you might clarify that, but Ian, maybe you might suggest what your understanding of the question is. Certainly, thanks, Stephen. Um, but, but to be honest, we're looking for a, for the projects to expand on any form of technology, and whether it's programming or or it's not, as as long as you feel it's something that you can put forward to to show us, if you like, that you have what we you think you would need to be on the IC course and you know, become a software engineer. So I see no reason why that wouldn't couldn't be a good basis for a good submission. It's all about how you how you present it, really. Very good, very good. Um, uh, one for uh, yeah. So I, I'll answer this one. Where can I ans access access the progress submission for text? Uh, the uh, answer is on the Airtable that you uh, would have submitted to. Adrian asks, "Hi there, great webinar as usual." Um, one for Tiziana, although I, I'm not sure we know the answer to this. Uh, what are the equivalent UCAS points grades for UK applicants? So I would not know right now, but there is definitely some kind of conversion table. And mm -hmm. in case uh, uh, the um, uh, student office can help you. Thanks. Uh, um, I'm, I'm sorry we don't have the exact answer to that, Adrian, um, but there is a conversion um, for sure. But of course, the, the, the portfolio would be separate. Um, uh, one for you, JJ. Can you use a project you completed a few years ago in your portfolio, or does it have to be more recent? Well, we'd like to see that you're continuously uh, contributing to the work and evolving it. Uh, but it also uh, just to take into account, um, well, if it's unless you've uh, submitted to a GitHub repo, we might have some difficulty determining timestamps, etc. Um, but it would be good to repeat that. This is a body of work that is continuously growing and evolving, just like the qualities that we expect from our students in immersive software engineering. Thanks, JJ. <clears throat> One for Tiziana. Does a student who has no prior experience in software development have a realistic chance of creating a project to the standard of someone whose computer science is an option for the Leaving Cert, who has already a considerable level of technological ability? Well, there were people that submitted projects, for example, in um, creating a little car that was actually moving itself and carrying the own batteries or so. There was no coding at all. Fantastic uh, design, fantastic, uh, uh, fantastic uh, engineering, so to say, around that. There were other people that did other similar work that is not connected with coding. So please don't restrict yourself just to the coding. There is more to technology than just the, than just the you know, writing software. Can I just add, Stephen, to that to repeat that you do. if you are studying the uh, computer science for leaving search, you're not allowed to resubmit any of those classroom based projects for the ISE right. portfolio. And that poses a, a bit a, somewhat of a challenge to um, some people considering ISE. What we're looking for is creativity, etc. Yeah. Thanks, JJ. Um, is CAD a suitable submission? I think you're going to need to give us a bit more information there, Anonymous. Um, not totally sure what you mean by that. Is it OK to sub a computer-aided drawing? Uh, I think you'd need to 
give us a fuller uh, a thought about that. Anonymous asks, and this is one for um, Tatiana, could you be more specific as to what maximum amount of tuition fee can be covered under scholarship for international non-EU students? The financial aspects from students from developing countries are crucial. This is something we've come, acro come across quite a few times, Anonymous, so I, so yes. I know Tatiana has a good answer here. Uh, unfortunately, the answer is basically there is no special treatment, so to say, for, um, for international uh, students. So the Irish, they can apply for SUSE grants, for example, if they are eligible. There is nothing specific, so to say, for uh, non-EU students. So Thanks, there, are generic, there are generic uh, possibilities, but they are actually through the UL website. There is nothing in ISC specific for this. Cheers. Perfect. Uh, one for you, Ian. Hi, if you've previously entered a project into a science competition, such as the Young Scientist, can you use that project for the portfolio? Actually, that's a question I I may well have to open to the floor here to my colleagues as well, because um, we have uh, previously um, stressed that you know anything that the leaving cert that it, you're getting points if you like for other subjects that they could they could not be forwarded on to into into an IC um, portfolio submission. But in this case, it doesn't overlap with the leaving cert, so um, nope, that is indeed an interesting, interesting question. So yeah, um, if you. Yeah, if you submitted something and you want to use it for the portfolio, you should actually do something on your own additionally. So if you basically say, OK, this was my individual or, or um, uh, collective as a team, so to say submission for that kind of uh, competition. Now I did this on top. We are going to evaluate this on top. Yeah, that, thanks, Tatiana. I, I think that the key the key thing here is we need to evaluate your potential and not uh, say a group. So if you do it in a group of uh, if you do a young scientist uh, in a group of four, then obviously there's a, a, a more more of a, a an, an issue there. But but obviously the text competition is completely fine to um, uh, to uh, um, use as a portfolio as long as it doesn't have anything else to do with your leaving cert stuff. Anonymous asks, is it still possible to have a social life and play sports while doing this course? Yes, it is. Um, this is a more structured course than likely you're used to. You you are expected to be in uh, more or less office hours, but like everybody who works in an office, uh, you can play afterwards. If you're disciplined with your time, you can play on the weekends. If you're disciplined with your time, you can absolutely um, uh, 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 um, have that life. Uh, we, we are, we, it is a very in, intense course. It's designed to be immersive, um, but it's not 168 hours a week. Um, uh, um, it's far less than that. So you, you can absolutely do that if you're um, disciplined. So one for you, uh, Tatiana, because I believe you use the term. I was wondering if you could explain the term cellular technology and how autonomous cars and phones use it. Yeah, the answer for the moment is no, because I didn't use the term cellular technology ah, and okay. it has nothing to do with autonomous cars and phones. So uh, thank yeah, you for okay. that. But uh, OK, OK, sorry, I thought I thought I heard you say that. All right. Um, no. uh, uh, Anonymous asks one for you, JJ. What is the most important thing to score well in the portfolio? If you look at the grading rubric, you'll see that the, the scores are evenly distributed across a number of areas. So the concept then going into design, which is incredibly important, uh, exploring the uh, the problem space, uh, the solution space and selecting the best, what was the underlying rationale. Then going into uh, developing the lightweight proof of concept prototype, if it's an Excel or maybe a little bit of code, etc. Then um, what were the implementation strategies, considerations, etc. there? And really important, it's something that it takes a little time for some of our students to get a handle on, is to evaluate your work. Get other people to evaluate your work. Try and get do so in a structured, systematic, rigorous, disciplined way. The evaluation should be repeatable. And then to what are the key takeaway points from that evaluation? Very good. Thanks, JJ. Uh, for Tiziana now about the Python library. This is the previous question. Combination of various different functions and classes that don't all relate to one another. It's more of a display of programming skills and ideas rather than a more practical library that serves the sole purpose. Would this be acceptable or should I focus on one problem and one idea? So um, one of the important uh, um, aspects of all the ISC um, philosophy is to be relevant. So the question is to whom is this Python library relevant beside yourself? 
Okay, we don't want to create anything that is born for the wastebasket. So if you find a way of uh, you know developing something that has a purpose that is that could be potentially useful to somebody, and there is a identified group of users, for example, that's of course higher up, let's say, in the likability. Uh, than uh, a Python library that is basically just for yourself as a sort of an exercise or test. Very good. Um, one, uh, again for Tiziana, if there are people who are quite advanced in programming and others who just start learning it, how will the people who are advanced learn or won't it be boring for them to wait for the ones who don't know how to code? <laughs> um, you assume um, in this way that uh, basically what we are doing, we are coding, you know, 40, 50 hours a week. That's not the case. And so there is a lot of other things that are going to be new also to the people that have already programmed before. There is, for example, a different take to the meaning of programming. There is all the, the theoretical and foundational part to that. And there are stretch goals. They will okay. be busy. We certainly will. Uh, Emma asks, can you give us a rundown of the text competition for secondary school students? I'll do this one. So Emma, basically um, the, the, the idea is to um, set up a project and over four weeks develop that project. So what we're really trying to test for is how, um, what, what the slope, uh, if you like, or the rate of change of your project is uh, from, from um, your, your, your base level to, to how you get on after four weeks. Um, and then we, we will um, analyze that um, Give you feedback each week, um, just very succinct feedback, and then, excuse me, at the end of the uh, uh, at the end of the process, there's an independent judging panel that awards um, a couple of thousand euros in prizes to both you and your school, and then we have a ceremony in January, um, date to be announced. Um, Anonymous asks, so we have we have seven minutes left, uh, folks, so we're going to go faster. Are solid work files okay to add to the folder, Ian? Um, this is interesting. It has had me thinking about a previous question about SolidWorks as well. Um, there, there may be some overlap here, perhaps the engineering, team search engineering uh, course, because I, I know that SolidWorks is, is used for that, uh, for doing CAD design. Um, what I would say is um, just to make sure that what you're submitting is not in any way linked with your Leaving Cert uh, engineering projects. We actually, we actually have uh, the curriculum for the Leaving Cert, we, we kind of keep up to date on all the projects and all the other subjects as well. So it is in your own best interest to submit things that are not related to other Leaving Cert projects. Um, partly because, to be honest, if, if everyone submits them, then you're all going to be submitting the same thing and then your, your novelty value obviously goes out the window. So, but yeah, just to think about that maybe, but I mean, you can attach anything you want to, to yeah, to the submission with a link. Cheers. Uh, th thanks, Sean. Uh, th thanks, Ian. Sorry. Sean asks, uh, do you think points for ISE will go down this year? I have no idea, Sean. If loads of people ap apply and loads of people want to do it and they have the points and then the points go up, it's a supply and demand system. Uh, we have no idea. Um, um, obviously, we, 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 we have high hopes for the course and we hope lots of people want to do it, um, but uh, we are doubling the number of places, so who knows. Um, are many of the work experience placed uh, uh, places based in Cork, the majority are in Dublin, um, Anonymous, but uh, there are some in Cork. Anonymous asks, uh, JJ mentioned, uh, this one for you JJ, I guess, uh, potentially using an app or website builders as opposed to coding. Would you recommend focusing on developing your project or trying to implement your coding experience, even if it's basic? I, I would suggest um, that people consider dipping their toes in the water if they're applying for an ICT related um, undergraduate discipline, just to make sure that, you know, coding in fact, well, in, in terms of software engineering, that coding, which is used as a vehicle for building out your solution, that it's something you have affinity for. Here, I can't answer the question directly. If there, um, if there are a feature that you'd like to tweak and you can't do so using an app builder, then it might be the case where you have to do a little bit of coding in order to do that. And that would justify then the investment in learning how to do some basic coding. Thanks, JJ. Anonymous asks, for the internships not in Limerick, will it be down to the students to find accommodation or will there be help from UL? Uh, this is a task for the student to find accommodation. And unfortunately, UL is not in a position to help. Uh, one for you, Ian, briefly. Are the word count things more of a limit or a target? Would you lose points for not writing enough, i.e. six to seven hundred words for Q1? Um, no, uh, you just write as many words as you feel are necessary. The, the thousand is the upper limit, but uh, if you feel you, you're can put something across very concisely, then then by all means go for it. But, it but, but use as much as you feel you need to do. 
Great, thanks Ian. Anonymous says, do the students have a choice for which residencies they go to? Absolutely, the companies compete for you, not the other way around. So you have a choice uh, in, in where to go, then you interview with the companies, and then if, if, if it's a good match, off you go. Uh, Anonymous asks, how do we apply for the application window to submit the portfolio, Ian? Um, the simple answer is that it's actually tied directly into the CAO application process. When you apply for ISE, then that gets sent on to admissions and UL and you will then be sent the link. Excellent, thank you. JJ, if I don't get the ISE course and I do get another computer course, is it possible to transfer to ISE after a year? You'd have to transfer into first year. That's effectively the same as going through the CAO process itself. Thanks, JJ. Uh, uh, the CAD project, uh, it, could you have a CAD based project like designing something like a device, product, house or something similar to aid one with life, uh, JJ? Uh, definitely yes, just what's new here. Uh, tell us about the design alternatives you considered and the rationale by which you selected one and then tell us about the evaluation. Lovely hurling. Uh, Tiziana, does this course allow for a broad work placements or Erasmus? Uh, we are working on this, so many of the companies are also international companies, so they have offerings abroad on Erasmus, we are working. Very good. Um, uh, Anonymous says, uh, well, for JJ, I have a Python project that will still be a work in progress by the submission date. Can I use it for the question one? Yeah, the answer to that is yes, given that life generally is work in progress. So. Very, very philosophical, JJ. Anonymous asks, would you say ISE differs from other college courses in the way there's not as much studying and learning notes off, more working and doing? Yes, Anonymous, absolutely. That's the whole point. Um, uh, it's hard work, but it's definitely different. Uh, Anonymous, um, uh, one, okay, uh, one for, I can't remember who answered the solid works question before, Ian, I think. Can you define what you consider to not be part of the Leaving Cert course regarding solid works? Part B is concept design, which can be anything as long as it has bedside alarm clock features. Yeah, well, it, when, when, you, when you're describing uh, uh, specifications, it sounds like you're being directed in a certain way in a particular course. So um, probably the safest way if you want to submit a SOLIDWORKS file is to try and create something yourself that's completely independent of any of the work you are doing in the engineering course. Very good, thanks, Ian. Uh, are, are the um, okay? Are the internships paid? Uh, yes, and if so, how much? Uh, the answer is that's completely at the discretion of the companies. Um, obviously, there's a minimum. Uh, uh, we're not going to have you working for less than the minimum wage. Um, but I very, very much doubt that any of any of these uh, amazing companies are going to uh, be paying you minimum wage. But all internships are paid. I can't believe it. We actually got to the end of all those questions. <laughs> amazing. Okay, it's um, with a minute to eight um, and no new questions coming in. That's fantastic. Uh, can I uh, thank you all? Oh yes. Uh, LM173, please all remember uh, that's our course for uh, that's our code for this course. Um, can I uh, and we will send out all the links to the slides and the recording and everything else if you sign up uh, to our um, uh, uh, website. Um, and so the video and the presentation will be there um, for, for all of you. So can I uh, uh, thank um, Professor Tiziana Margaria, Dr. Ian O'Keefe and the great JJ Collins for for uh, what has been a fantastic webinar. And thank you for all of your questions and your comments and your thoughts. Um, it's it's uh, really inspiring to keep uh, thinking um, more about this uh, extraordinary course. So uh, have a, a good evening and thank you very much for your time and attention.